So we got this Toyota 4Runner here. We're starting to take apart the IFS and figured we'll just show you the aftermath of what you usually start with. You take the tires off, put it on jack stand, or you put it on jack stand, take the tires off, start unbolting all the steering, getting the stuff, you know, that's easier out of the way. So you unbolt this, undo the front bumper so it's more open, and then we're going to start undoing some of the steering linkage, the steering rod that goes through the steering box, and then you'll unmove or you'll remove the line which our helper is right now doing as you can see right here he's using the line wrench as you should and he's slowly getting them taken off and then he's going to pull his final bolt for his steering box and he'll pop that off because he already cut the steering arm off which we don't need and then we'll get to unbolting more things from this Pull on it. So we got one working down here, getting the heat shield off for the point two RV exhaust header, or a down pipe, not a header. So if you ever run into this problem of a bench front square tube don't ever worry it's just a little extra work but you can get it taken care of what you'll do is you'll go parallel with the frame you're going to cut it out and you'll replace it with a fresh 2x2 two two, 120 wall you know your normal mild steel material you will then put your front hanger extension kit if you get it from us on and then you will project it up clamp it square it and get to going. You see, not every rig has to be, you know, clean and perfect. So this one's not. One side looks really nice, and the other side's just a little beat, beat up, and you can see it <laughs> right in there. But not too bad of a rig to, you know, at least use for a little wheeler. It has all solid one color not rusted out and the interior isn't in too bad a shape get a little detail and it'll be a nice little rig so as you can see we got the main four brackets cut out the one here the one back there we just saws on both of them unhook the uh, traction bar the sway bar whatever you want to call it Cut the other side and cut the other side. And now the boys are getting it cleaned up. And then they're gonna start on the inside of the frame as well and get the massive door to cut off. And then start grinding. But What's up guys, today I'm bringing you our Walker Fab Lab front hanger extension kit. This takes your trail gear front hanger and moves it out a little bit. That way you have a really nice platform to build a bunker off of and you're getting the maximum out of your solid axle swap kit. So first off, you'll project your lower plate, the key plate, to the bottom of the chassis. You're going to want to make sure it's square, so you take a clamp and you clamp it. Now on the stock chassis, you're going to have a little gap in here about an eighth of an inch. This one's about three eighths of an inch because the center tube has been replaced because it, has, it was bent prior to install this. So we cut it out and replaced it with two inch 120 wall square tubes and it will be fine for what it is. It just you know, holds the frame rail from spreading apart. Uh, is the structure stronger? Yeah, it could be. Does it really matter? No. But for the new dealer, yes it is. It's very critical. So, that being said, you're going to project your lower plate up to the frame, clamp it, make sure you're not bending it in the center. Uh, you will square it up left and right, front to back, and then that way, once everything is within a 30 second, depends on your tolerance, but I don't really care for any more than 30 seconds. So, the 
is right within 30 seconds, I'm really happy. Because when we spring bushings have more play in them than my measurement. So that being said, uh, you will then uh, track load your hand once it is square and your, your top plate. You'll then put your lower hanger on and project it squared up, left and right, front to back. And uh, key thing is to use as many measuring points as possible. So I like to measure from here with the square to the body mount, from here with the square to the end of the front mount up here. As long as these front plates are not bent. If it's bent, then you just gotta take what good you can get and then you can do it. So far, I have not had one that came out bad. They all come out pretty good as long as you try and make sure they're squared up. Your hanger will be then tack loaded on. You will then project your little speed gusset that go in here. You have six of them. I like to start on the inside and work my way out single left one at a time. These are your outside caps. That way you can protect all of the elements from the, your nice hanger and you're not getting anything inside there that you can't, you know, wash out. You will then put all your uh, caps up. I do these two. One, 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 and one. And Time, I like to sit up my plate and make sure that it is square. And when I do this, it is perfect every single time. So take your time and you know, do it right. That way, if you have a very nice product at the end of the day, and you can be proud of what you built. So, with that being said, uh, you'll then clamp it here, clamp it here, and then clamp it in the middle. It'll hold it all down flat and through. Uh, you can check it with a square just in case because sometimes you know parts aren't perfect or something isn't right. So let's double check this plate so it's too flat, straight across. And then you will then uh, I like to not weld these in yet. I will tack weld up here and tack weld down here, up here and down here, and then one in the center and one up here. Everywhere where I can still get to with a grinder. So if I have to make any changes to this, uh, I can then make those changes. Before you go to tack weld any of those, I did forget that you will want to fully weld these all the way up and around. Okay? Then once that is done, you'll smack your plate up there, put your end caps on, which is these right here that you can bend right here at your own vice to a 90 degree angle. You smack those up there, weld this up and down and around, and grind this smooth so it's nice, flush, and fluent looking. You'll then fill this in with a little bit of weld, make it like a little rampage, uh, or weld this in, do the same thing, and then do a nice beat across the whole thing. You want to uh, weld in 2 inch to 3 inch pitch weld, depending on your welding experience. Uh, you don't want to warp the front hanger because this is, you know, a lot of time and money, and you want to have a nice product at the end of the day. So take your time. Uh, improper, you know, install can lead to improper, you know, product at the end, so you want to definitely take the time and have a nice product for the end of the day. So, once you get that uh, all welded up, I will then make sure that these are still pressed down, that way everything is sitting nice and flush. You will then weld your seat slot glass, grind them all smooth, and then you have your front hanger kit all done. And then you can see to do the rear hole in your frame. Thank you, and hopefully you like our product. Well, since you guys didn't see it, here's our Walker Fab Lab plate tube pocket shock hoop kits. Hell yeah. And then here's your generic shock hoop kit with our still Walker Fab Lab plate tube pockets. One badass setup. Hell yeah.